<laughs> That's how the call starts. Let's just laugh. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. The theme this year has been amazing. Healing the split from wounded inner child to healthy adult self. We are in our December call of the 2023 edition of GSEMP. And this is it. We're doing our last month on this theme as we get ready to go into next year's theme, which has already been uh, kind of like a, uh, pinpointed and will be very much about standing as pillars of light and anchoring the light, anchoring it as deep as we can. One second. Okay, good. Uh, anchoring it as deep as we can, standing as anchor points that are able to hold the higher and higher frequencies coming in and have that not only help humanity and the earth with the ascension process, but also be very, very beneficial and help us see how solid we've become. So that, that came through in, in the October call. But basically what we've been doing all year since January is really working on healing trauma out of our bodies. Because trauma is what happens when there is a dissociation within us between the memory of something which gets put up in the brain and the actual energetic impact in our bodies of that event. And healing really is healing the split. To heal is to bring these two back together, to bring them back together so that the energy that was trapped in the body and dissociated and only as a floating memory left on top in our, in our brain structure, as that's brought back together, the energy that was stuck holding that can finally evolve, can finally grow up, can finally regain access to the entire field. So there's a couple of core concepts this year that we spoke about that might be a little bit disturbing for some people uh, when, you know, we have been trained so much to have this vision of, um, like it's sort of the purpose, but like this whole idea of the inner child, you know, like, and this whole idea that it's like, we have this like inner child and we need to like, we need to coddle it and take care of it and love it and let it know that it's safe and then and it's like, Yes, it's not that that's false, but to heal the trauma, to bring back these energies together leads to the energy that we called the inner child, which is unevolved pieces of our consciousness that are still looping when, when we were three or four or five or six. It brings them back into the center. It brings them back into the entire field. And that's what we mean when we say going from a wounded inner child to a healthy adult self. The healthy adult self has regained sovereignty over itself. It is no longer in a bunch of pieces, a three-year-old that wants this, a five-year-old that longs for this, a seven-year-old that's angry at this, a 13-year-old that's pissed off at the world. And all these like energies are kind of like almost tug of war in us. And all of them, they all just need the same thing. All of them just need us to go and meet them and finally release them. They cannot do it themselves. They are, c'est figé. You know, it's like, it's like a frozen energy. It's not able to get out of its loop on its own. It needs us, the sovereign being, the self with a capital S, to come in and hold it and bring core star energy into it that allows it, ah, that allows it to open up and feel safe enough to release what it's holding. And what it's holding is generally speaking, you know, like um, excessively intense emotion. You know, it's, it's the emotion that a three-year-old went through. It's the emotion that a five-year-old went through. 
It is very intense. It is pre-linguistic. There are no words associated to it. It is such a deep body feeling that, you know, for, for your physical body and your structure that ensures your survival, it, it feels very dangerous. It feels like you could die if you felt that. And that's why I dissociated in the first place. So what a wonderful theme to go through and understanding that expression, forgive and forget, understanding what that truly means. As we bring these energies back together and they're finally able to integrate into the system, as we forgive, and I'm not even talking about forgiving someone, as we forgive, which means to release, let go, accept, love, ugh, to release it, it no longer exists. It goes back to being pure energy and circulation within you, energy that's accessible to circulate within your body as a sovereign adult, energy that's free to finally expand and contract back into the core star and create more individuated light, more essence. Once that happens, it doesn't exist anymore. That memory doesn't need to exist anymore once you bring it back together. It, it's kind of like a distant memory of like a movie you saw. There's no more emotional charge. So some, some, some concepts this year that are like, what do you mean there's no, there's not really an inner child? And what do you mean forgive and forget is true? Like, but that's what we're aiming. We are aiming to be finally back into structural integrity, structural integrity with our self with a capital S, our higher self. So, wow, what a theme. S small little recap, because it's always good to kind of see where, where, where have we been? January was devoted to really working on feeling that sphere of light around us, the line, that central line, the hair line, the expansion of the sacred heart space all out. So we did that all of January. Both of the January calls were devoted to really creating that container, that ball of energy, the spinning balls, the hairline, the sacred heart space, and letting the system know it's safe to do this. We're not going to go too fast. We're not going to like try to like, can't you heal already? Like just nice and slow. So that was kind of like a really good introduction and, and prep work. Go back there anytime you want to redo these meditations. They're awesome. February and March, we looked at the anatomy of a defense structure. So we started looking at how it's actually made. You've got the wound. Then you've got, you know, you've got the, the, the emotional, irrational kind of defense structure that got built around it to protect it. And then the, the other layer after that, you've got a more matured defense structure that, you know, the egos had a chance to m refine and make, you know, like make it sound really, you know, like intelligent and true and stuff like that. So then like our whole belief system that we walk around in the world with that we defend ourselves with. So we kind of looked at how that was made. We did campfire with bringing up the parts of us that are afraid to feel and the parts of us that feel too much. That was a super cool, cool call. And then that second call in March was all about, the March call was all about walking down a beach and actually meeting each of these layers of the defense structure as we went into it. And then we devoted April, May, and June to the layers of the brain, to really understanding how this works, how defense structures are made, your brainstem. And our, our mantra for the brainstem was, it's safe. <laughs> it's safe to let go. It's safe to feel this. And then we went into the limbic brain the, way, the month after. And then we really went deep into like understanding the male and female roles, how, you know, how they have constructed for us our belief system around how to be in a group and how to make sure we belong to the tribe, how people will treat you, which is what the you know, the feminine teaches us and how to be safe in the world, which is what the masculine teaches us. And then June, we went into the higher levels of the brain, the cortex and the neocortex. These were incredibly powerful calls. Wow. 
And then from there, with that kind of like deep understanding of the defense structure, how it's made, the childhood stuff, the survival, the tribal, and the like cortex and intuitive brain understood, then we went into understanding character structures. And that is some very deep work. There's no way that in two months you can cover all of that. Some people have been studying that for years, but we still started understanding what character structures are all about. The schizoid, the oral, the psychopathic, the masochistic, and the rigid, the kind of wounds they went through as children, the wounds we went through as souls in other lives that led to us preferring certain character structures to others, and the great, great gift that they can, that they contain, because to heal those and transcend them is to then heal one of the five core soul wounds that are within the fabric of humanity and beyond, and actually understand what's behind that wound you know like behind the abandonment wound is the absolute knowing that you are one with god and it could never abandon you you know like so these were wonderful calls so starting these calls we started working very specifically on the fourth field of the body because when we were working on the third three layers of the brain that was the first body the second body the third body the physical emotional and mental and then we started coming into the fourth body and then that's all about your that's your relational body that's how you enter into relations with other people that's how your energy field enters into relations with other energy fields and this is where character structures play together as energy streams energy currents of push pull withdraw like all these kind of currents that we have with other people and then we went, we did another thing related to the fourth layer of the field. We started looking at the chakra cords. So that's what we did in October. So September, October, we were focused on working on the uh, fourth layer of the field. Chakra cords, we went pretty deep into all of them and understanding what they each represent. These seven chakras and the chakra cords all on the fourth field of the body, we're always remembering we were working on the fourth field of the body, which corresponds to the heart chakra, which is called the astral body. Whew. And then <laughs> last month and this month, we are working on the most important relationship in your life, which is the relationship between your human self and your divine self, which is your relationship between the self with a small s and the self with a capital s so we went beyond only working from the fourth field and we came back to working with all of the seven layers of the field so in a nutshell i want to continue working on this and i the meditation that came in is absolutely beautiful and i can't wait to i can't wait to do it with you and and receive your feedback on what it felt like i also want to re-mention that last month as we are working on these this relationship to ourself that is the key relationship in your life your relationship between you and what has created you and your relationship between you and what you have created right so it's like your human self what you have decided to believe what you have created as a belief system and a story about what you went through as a child and all that that's your creation that's your creation and this is the <laughs> this is so awesome to think about this you made up a story that's the creation you made as a human you made up a story and guess what? That story's not over. You know, I don't want to talk about the hero's journey, but like, you know, that story is ever unfolding. That story is the story of you coming back to knowing the bigger self that you are. And the creator, source, God, that is your true parent. That's becoming a healthy adult sovereign self like this new relationship 
where you are able to be there for the human you the same way that God is there for you, the same way that your higher self is there for your smaller self. So it's just this beautiful kind of like, you know, process of coming deeper and deeper into our relationship into a physical body, which involves a lot of duality, but that's part of the game and that's part of the story and that's part of the adventure. It's like, I went on this adventure, I got lost thinking I was the separate thing. And part of that adventure was getting lost enough to then find the road to come back to realizing, oh my God, I've been one with all this all, all along. And 2024 energies, they're, they're going to be pulling us pretty hard to like, are you ready to expand your story of what you are? Because uh, I'll talk about it more in January when I talk a little bit about the the energies coming in and the, you know, like the, not too much astrology, but uh, but the solar plexus mutation happening within the, the field of humanity is super important to understand because it's it's evolving our intuition. It's evolving how we, we're going to be able to work with emotions, which is going to be amazing because <laughs> we will be less subject to being taken over by emotion completely. And uh, yeah, so we're standing as, uh, how can I say this? We're on the, um, we're on the leading edge of something doing this work. Anyone doing deep trauma release work is on the leading edge of what's going to be coming in because we're going to need people that are able to hold the light and anchor that light while other people start flipping out because they haven't done this work yet. So I just want to recognize each and every one of you right now and be like, thank you so much for being willing to do this work because it ain't easy. <laughs> we know it's not easy, but man, is it ever worth it? It doesn't take long doing it before you start seeing that it's worth it. Okay, let's see. Anything else I want to say? I, there's one little thing I want to say and it's like, Slip my mind. Mm, yes. As we're working last month and this month on the relationship to ourself, to the divine and the human self, to the upper chakras and the lower chakras, to the lower subtle bodies and the higher subtle bodies, I, I, I introduced a couple of concepts such as the silver cord and the integration point. Some of you already, the assembly point, some of you already know them because you've been working with me for many years. But uh, just mentioning that that will also be part of what we're working on tonight. And just remembering what that silver cord is. It's very important to understand what it is. Your silver cord attaches to the back of your heart. And it is what ensures that your physical, emotional, and mental body can develop. Because when you die, these don't, they, they, they recycle. But every body above that doesn't. Everybody, 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 everybody above that are your like eternal bodies. They're wherever you're going, you're going with them. And whatever you, whatever work that you do in your life to expand your ability to feel the outer bodies, that's the spiritual development that follows you. That is gained it's earned, it's done. Because many people have astral bodies, but the other, other bodies are very, very, um, they're very tight, they're very dense, there's not a lot of space between them. So that's why a lot of the soul alchemy work is so good, because that's what we're doing, we're decluttering these upper realms, and then all the work we're doing is permanent. Permanent as in you leave with it. <sighs> the most important relationship in your life is and always will be the one to your creator and the one to yourself, the one to the self that you walk around in on this earth. And that middle place between those two is your soul. Is your higher self. Your higher self's a little bit, your higher self is like all of your soul. So it's a little bit bigger than just the soul you're incarnated in right now. But 
that's what we're going to keep working on tonight because that's the most important relationship I want you to cultivate over and over again to yourself. To the ego, which is kind of like the human thing, to your heart, which is your soul in this incarnation, and to your higher self, which is the vast, vast being that you are that knows absolutely that it is one, that it is one with its creator. So, oh yeah. I can't recommend enough to anyone watching this video on YouTube to consider purchasing the meditations that we did this year. This is a, a very expansive theme. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful gift to offer yourself or someone you love. And, um, uh, to anyone that would want to join us in the program for the January edition, reach out. There's information below the video to let you know how to get in contact with me.